Hi, Ms. Sakuda's class. My name is Hale Takazawa, and I'm going to give you a tour of um, San Francisco as we look at different buildings for uh, lateral um, design that's going to help buildings stay up, keep buildings protected from earthquakes and other lateral movements. So lateral movement means you move side to side like this. And there's three different ways that engineers usually plan buildings so that they don't do that. Okay, we're here at Fisherman's Wharf, so let's go and look for some uh, lateral reinforcement. We're looking for X braces or K braces like that. Okay, let's go. There's a big X. Tier 39. Now there's some bracing on there. See that? But that's not K bracing or X bracing, so it's just normal lateral bracing. All right, so I'm here in um, my studio. This is my little playroom area. It has a lot of toys. You can see in the back of me, but it's good to model things as well. So today I'm going to show you about um, what we have been showing you, the K bracing, the X bracing, and no bracing. And this is my little earthquake table. And I'm going to shake it like this, and then we'll see which of these will stand up pretty well. Uh, according to engineering, I think probably the X brace and the K brace should do better than that, but let's see for ourselves. Let's give it a little shake. Oh, before I do that, there's a Play-Doh. No, it's, it's not brownies and it's not other things you might be thinking of. Bracing these things, and it's just stuck on there. You know, nothing special, but uh, let's give it a shake. Let's see what happens. building would you like to be in? Alright, well that's that's the idea is bracing might break off, things might happen to the building, but it doesn't fall on the little guy that's standing there. two towers, one with this cup with some counterweights on it, so when this shakes, hopefully the counterweights will help keep it stable. And on this side we don't have anything, which is a typical building. And we'll put our building to the next way. Voila. Don't stand close to falling buildings. Alright, here's Jet. With a balancing stick at the top. It's the same principle we use for a building. Hold it on your hold it on your hand like this, but see if you can balance it. Just moving around like that. Whoa. So if Jet's hand is the ground and it's moving. Move it around like this, Jet. Move your hand around like that. Yeah. That stays stable because of the counterweight on the top. The jet hand is moving on the bottom like an earthquake. Earthquake. And it stays stable at the very top. Meanwhile, he's moving it like this at the bottom. And at the very top, nothing. A counterweight. Just like you can put at the top of a building. Okay. Our last demonstration. is we'll go back to our little house construction with blocks. It's always fun. One side will be right on the ground. The other one, we're going to put something called base isolators, Lincoln logs in this case. And it will be built on a foundation of rollers. This uh, idea, I believe, was invented in Tokyo, because the Japanese have a lot of earthquakes in Tokyo Bay. 
and um, and this one is without. So we're going to put our little man down here. He'll probably fall down in a large earthquake, but let's try this. Very quick jolts here. Very quickly. This will happen and fall down. Alright, let's try this again. For a man who hits the ground. Right away, get a big result. So these are the three types of countermeasures that you can use to keep your buildings from uh, falling and keeping them a lot stronger. You have the K bracing, or you can also use X bracing, or you can use your base isolation, or you can use your countermeasure, counterweight up on the top. And if it's a counterweight that accelerates or moves differently than the ground shape, then the better off you'll be. And that's all I got to show for you today. Uh, maybe next time I'll show you some other exciting examples of other um, things that we use as engineers. And my name is Hale Takazawa, and I'll see you next time. Bye.